So without further ado, here is Mr. Jake Ullman from the Documentary Film Festival, and he's going to talk about learning to see. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good. Wonderful. Good. Well, my name is Jake Ullman. I'm the director producer of Learning to See the World of Insects. It's a film that I made about my dad. My dad is an insect photographer living in Columbia, South America. And what you're going to see is a lot of his photographic work of very rare, hard to find insects. Um, so after uh, you get to watch the video clip, then we can, I will ask you guys some questions, you can ask me questions, and uh, we can talk about some of the amazing things that you are about to see. You want to go right to the clip? Yeah, we can go right to the clip and they can watch it and then okay. I think that'll help. Uh, while, I'm, while I'm trading out, why don't you talk just a little bit about how you became a filmmaker? Okay, yeah, no problem. Um, so I started, uh, I started working in film when I was a high school student. I uh, got my start doing actual snowboard and skateboard videos and that kind of thing. And it eventually, I, I moved to Los Angeles and I started working in music. I did a lot of music videos and live music concerts and commercials and TV shows and that kind of thing. And then uh, after a little while, I, I wanted, to make, uh, wanted to make movies and so I made a uh, romantic comedy a few years ago. I did a rock documentary and and now I'm doing the documentary that you are about to see. So um, are there kids in the classrooms today who want to be filmmakers? Raise your hand if you have taken yeah. films or want to be a filmmaker. Oh right. very cool. And how about photographers? Or do we have do we have kids in the classroom that want to be photographers? Oh, very cool, very cool. Great. So, uh, a show of hands, how many, how many of you are the photographer in your family? <laughs> yeah, okay, I see some of the same hands, very cool. Um, oh, that, that's, that's fantastic. So now, do you have, uh, do you have editing programs uh, that you work on on your computers? Raise your hand if you edit on your computers. Yeah? Kinda. Yeah, kinda, cool, cool. Um, how about GoPros? Do some of you have GoPros and use GoPros? All right. Yep. Okay. I see some hands up there. Yeah. When I was your age, we didn't have GoPros. We didn't have computers or anything like that. So um, you guys are very lucky with all the new technology that's that's going on. So while while we wait to get the uh, the clip started, are there when you when you hear of insects, what do you think of? Okay, let's let's turn and talk a little bit in our groups. When you look, when you think of insects, what do you think of? Talk for about one minute, and then I'll call on each school, and one person can give an idea of what you've been talking about. So turn and talk to each other for one minute. When you think of insects, what do you think of? Go. <laughs> I think Teachers, mute your microphones, please. <laughs> okay. 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 Let's start with Mrs. Allison. I'm going to pick on you. Um, would you have one of your students tell a cup, an idea or two that you were just talking about? When I think of when we think of insects, we think of tiny creatures, six legs, and antennas. <laughs> okay, that's a lot. Good job. Good job. How about um, let's go to uh, Mona's classroom in above. Yeah. What do you know about insects, Anna? Somebody share something about insects. You don't have to look at the screen. <laughs> They're gross, why? They're gross. I love that. I love that description. Good job. Yeah, it's kind of weird talking to the TV. Gross? Peter, why are they gross? Because they're what? Is anybody scared of insects? Raise your hand if you're scared of insects. <laughs> okay. Good job. Okay. 
great. Thank you. Know. Let's go to R. Lee. How about an R. Lee? One or two ideas about insects. Six-legged bugs and lay, well, six-legged bugs. bugs and plants or something. Where okay. Six-legged bugs. Good job. How about in... in th <laughs> thanks, Arlie. How about in Freud? Do you guys have any ideas about insects? Sam, you want to come up and talk? Okay, we have all of our um, third floors and fifth grade in one room now because our signal kept dropping. Great. Thank you for figuring that out. Good problem solving. <laughs> okay, Freud, do you have any ideas about um, insects? I think that when the bugs, like when bugs make, make the noises, I think it's music. It's like music. Ooh, I like Ooh, that description. Nice. Thanks, Freud. And how about yeah. cut bank? Do you guys have any ideas about insects? We do. Let's see, Uriah, you want to say something? Well, Shh. One at a time. One at a time. Uriah's first. One person. Okay, Alex. McKenna. Um, they're pretty because they have like all sorts of patterns on their wings and stuff. Great. Okay. Thank you, Cutbank. All right, teachers, if you mute your microphones, I'm going to turn the time back to Jake, and he can kind of tell you this is a longer film, so we're not going to watch the whole thing, um, but he'll give you a little idea of where we are in the film. Okay, so what you're going to see, uh, we're about, at this point, we're almost uh, 25, 30 minutes into the film. The film is 70 minutes long, and it's me basically traveling with my dad in South America. So you will sort of see um, uh, an interactive map of our trip and then it's going to get right into his photography and the types of things that he's photographing. You're going to hear from some scientists um, explaining on, uh, on certain insects and why insects are important and then you're going to see pictures that you probably have never seen before. So I, uh, I hope you enjoy the clip. Okay. Let's hope it works. <laughs> I'll step, I'll step right yep. Yeah. We fly from Cali to to Bogota, Bogota to Lima, from Lima to Cusco, Cusco to Puerto Maldonado, which is a frontier city that's on the edge of the of the of the jungle. So now we have to try to find a, a large taxi, but, but look at the size, look at the size of the taxis. that one of the most important things that Robert's work does is gives these animals a dignity. And even if it's just having people appreciate their beauty more, I mean, when I look at some of his photos, I can't believe that they even, a creature like this even exists. There are insects that are really, have developed within um, the Amazon uh, forest. Ooh. There you find the most elaborate things. Photographers that are out in the field capturing a lot of diversity do a great service. Getting information out in terms of what's really out there, all the cool different things and the different forms that people aren't usually exposed to. Having images of life on Earth of, of the, that nature inspires people. It really raises the awareness of what's at stake. 
what I'm doing is, is using macro photography to magnify something that's basically small. And if something is small, human beings can, can ignore it. And that's a big problem. How many insects have you walked past because you never saw them? When people see these creatures that they never possibly believed existed, uh, it's amazing to them and they become interested in nature, they become interested in wildlife, and they become interested in conservation. Uh, that is so important that they do that. I started looking through Robert's work, and I remember feeling a little embarrassed. I had spent my time in the forest looking just at these big things and not realizing the majority of life around me was something that I had never seen before. We are looking for the weird ones, the strange ones, the beautiful ones, the ugliest ones really the most interesting and photogenic ones. There are so many incredible insects out here, but some of my favorite ones to find are the katydids. So you have these two different branches of katydids. One wants to be undetected, wants to be invisible, and the other who wants to be visible the visible one, he wants to advertise that he is not good to eat or that he's a fighter. He's going to possibly hurt you. The hard part about that is some of these guys are so quick and agile. Oh, he's aggressive. Whoa. You can hold it like this, and it will escape. It will fall down or escape in some way, turn over and bite your oh. finger at the same time. So, uh, uh, as I was saying, <laughs> as I was saying, he, he, he bites uh, very hard. The bright colors are an indication of, you don't want to fool with me. I taste bad or I'm going to bite you bad. So I get the shot that's like this open, but she can go like this. She can do it so wide that she can get to your end of your finger. This has a name, you know what the name is? Spiny Devil. This is all deep rainforest creations that are more elaborate so they can escape uh, detection by the predators. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and um, see if anybody has questions so far for Jake. We, we do. We do. I do. Okay. Um, let's go to Cut Bank. Looks like they have some good questions. Let's get started with them. Jeremiah. It's cool how the bucket opened his mouth all the way to pinch a person's finger. That is incredible. Is that a question? No. <laughs> I just say. Uh, yeah. So, uh, spiny, okay, Logan, what's your question? Uh, the spiny devil, is it poisonous? Good question. No, no, that's a great question. The spiny devil is not poisonous. Um, the katydids that you saw in those photos, they're typically not poisonous. Um, the ones that look like the leaves, they all they want to do is stay still they don't they, they want to be camouflaged in the in the forest so that they can avoid detection from predators and the ones that have the big teeth i mean that's sort of their defense mechanism so if uh if if something is trying to attack them if it's a praying mantis or something um they use their spikes or their um their big teeth as uh as a form of defense um you know jake we have some of your photos still photos do we want to go through that maybe yeah we look can at show those? some still photos too yeah 
So in, in, in this photo that you see, this is what's known as a tree hopper. And a tree hopper is, about that, that guy is about this big. So you can see how, how, how little space there is between my fingers. And that's the guy there. And I actually have, I have it here. Um, he's inside this little bottle. Uh, there's, and there's about 10 of them in there. Um, these are very small little guys. Um, so very hard, very hard to find. Let's see if we can get him there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not very good at this. There we go. Ooh, where are they? There they are. I don't know if you can see them. There we go. Yep. There we go. That's them for real. Yep. Those are the little guys that we, uh, a couple that we were able to bring back from, uh, from our trip to Peru. That's those guys. Yep. What is it actually supposed to be? What was the, what was the question? Did you hear them? Um, was that a question, Cupcake? Yes, we have one more question. Sure, go ahead. What was your question? It's an insect. So just raise your hand. Up and raise your hand if you're going to ask a question. Yep, raise your hand. Okay. Mona's class, do you have a question? Yes, we do. Anna, okay. what's your question? Do you have a insect? Okay. You'll have to repeat that for us. Real loud, honey. Do you have a favorite insect? Do you have a favorite insect? Uh, my favorite insects are the katydids. The, the photo that you see right now, that's actually a tree hopper. Um, they're really cool. Um, that there is an ant, but my favorite are the katydids. And the reason I like the katydids so much is because of uh, the, the, the previous one um, before the blue guy. Those yeah. guys. So these are, these are katydids. Um, I, I love the different colors. I love the spikes. I like the leaf mimicking ones that, that really camouflage to the forest floor. Um, not only are they beautiful, but they really show um, they're wonderful examples of evolution. So those, are, those would be my favorite. Okay. Can we ask one more question? Sure. Go ahead, somebody. Who's going? Why is your interest in about insects? <laughs> Did you hear that? that? Go ahead and repeat it, Mona. Oh, or Peter. Why is your interest in about insects? Why are they so interesting? Uh, why are they so interesting? Yeah. Um, you know, they're so interesting because Insects are, are, are you know, uh, these insects especially are very hard to find. Um, they're rare, they're exotic, and insects comprise 80% of all animals on the planet. And so they really are the, the foundation of the food chain. So we need insects, they, they, help, to, um, they help to keep the environment healthy. They almost act as gardeners, they pollinate the plants, they aerate the soil, um, and they act as a, as a food source for all, the, for all the bigger animals that you're more familiar with. And the fact that they're so evolved and there's so many tens of thousands of insects um, that are, that are you know, beautiful in all, in all different ways, um, that's why I think that they're, they're, they're so cool and, uh, and fun to study and fun to look at. Great. How about, uh, let's go to Arlie. Arlie, do you have a question? Amy, did you have a question? Go ahead, Amy. Amy does. Have go, you Amy. Ever, have you ever seen those bugs that in your life, it, in, without those pictures? Um, well, I, was, uh, I went on the uh, trip with my dad to Peru and Ecuador and visited him in Colombia. And so a lot of the photos that you see, I have, I have seen those insects live and in person, and I have um, uh, filmed them live and in person. So I've had them walking on my hand, um, you know, walking on my camera, and, uh, and that kind of thing. So yes. Great. We'll come back to you, Arlie, but I want to be sure we get to every school. How about Arrowhead? Are you on today? 
Um, and if so, do you have a question? Nope, let's go ahead to Hamilton. Have you ever, have you or your dad ever gotten bit by one of the bugs? Seriously. Now, I have never gotten bit um, by one of the insects that you see, but I'll tell you a quick little story about um, my dad getting bit by something that's known as a tarantula hunting wasp. A tarantula hunting wasp is the one that my dad photographed is about this big. It's uh, four and a half inches long. It's all black. It has orange wings and it has an orange tongue. And what it does is it, it stings a tarantula and the, the venom in its sting will paralyze the tarantula. It will bring it back to its den and then it lays its eggs and the babies hatch and they eat the tarantula. And so a man had caught a, um, one of these wasps and brought it brought it to my dad but brought it in a plastic bag and was walking down the road with a plastic bag and so when it got to my dad the wasp stung my dad through the plastic bag on the hand and my dad's hand blew up to three times its normal size and he lost all of the feeling in his fingers and his hand for a month so that would be the worst that would probably be the worst sting that he's ever he's ever encountered wow Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's go back to um, Arlie. I think they had a couple of questions. So, Arlie, did you have another question for Jake? What's the bug behind you? <laughs> the bug behind me is a tree hopper. So, this tree hopper is about, he's about that big. And there are tens of thousands of species of tree hoppers and tree hoppers have actually been around for over 40 million years. Uh, there's, uh, there, there have been samples of tree hoppers that were found in amber and uh, they've been around for a very long time. Great. Um, I am wondering right now if we should break for just a minute and have the kids talk a little bit amongst each other. I'm wondering about the bugs in your backyard. If you were a filmmaker like Jake, what bugs would you go out and film that are close to your school or your house? Turn and talk to each other for just a minute and then we'll get some ideas from each of you. So that's why the view changed. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. But it's just harder because we can't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can maybe switch the photo to that fly or that wasp. And I okay. think that that picture's kind of cool. The blue guy? Yeah, blue guy. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and hear from each of you. I'm going to start with Hamilton again. Um, Hamilton, did you guys have any ideas about what you might want to be filmmakers and film in, in your backyards? Yes, but we have a different question real quick. Oh, good, a different um, question. Go. What's the hardest part about making a documentary? Oh, good question. Oh, that's a great question. Um, the hardest part is um, finding a good subject. So you want to tell, you know, documentary, you want to you want to tell a good story, and then you have to have access, um, you know, to that subject if it's a person, if you're dealing with an issue. Um, and documentaries will sometimes take a long time because you start out with an idea of what you think it will be and then it turns out to be something different. When I started this documentary, this I started in 2005 and I wanted to do like a 20 minutes short subject on my dad, the fact that he changed his life and moved to a foreign country and uh, at that time he had not even started photographing insects yet and so it, it went from you know, a story just kind of about him to really about his work and the importance of insects and, and tracking these incredibly beautiful creatures that are very rarely studied. So I think, you know, finding that right idea and getting access to the subject and then it takes a long time to make a documentary. So you have to, 
you know, have a lot of stamina and, and, uh, and have a good team of people that you work with. How, uh, about how long did it take you, Jake, to film this? So I started in 2005, um, but I just kind of did a tri like a one trip a year. I would go on one trip a year uh, to go visit my dad. And then in about 2012 is when it became a full-time job. And the editing process took about uh, 18 months. Um, and I had around 200 hours of footage and about uh, 3,000 images to go through. So, you know, I, I used the best stuff to try and make the best film possible, um, but it took a, it took a long time. Um, teachers, just to let you know, um, we can't, we've changed our views so we can only see one class at a time, so I won't see if you raise your hand for a question. So I'll just go down the list. Um, I do want to hear from Hamilton. Did you think of a bug that you wanted to film in Hamilton? A tick? A ah. tick, because Hamilton has uh, a history of studying ticks. Mm -hmm. Famous for ticks in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. That is so true. Okay, uh, excellent. Maybe you can draw us a picture of some of those bugs that you want to film and uh, send them to us and we would pass them on to Jake. Um, let's go to Cut Bank. Cut Bank, did you have uh, a bug that you want to film up there in Cut Bank or do you have a question? Do you want the colony or the, or the Miss Melanie's class? Oh, sorry. Class? Um, the, let, let's go to the, not the colony class, but the other class. Thanks, Mona. Okay, Miss Melly. Yes, we do, we do have some bugs we want, I mean, insects we want to film. Mm -hmm. We have a list here. Okay, good. Let's hear it. Mosquitoes and butterflies and crickets and grasshoppers for tree hoppers. Great. Cool. Excellent. Okay, let's go to the colony school. Um, how about you guys? Do you have okay. weird bugs up there? <laughs> Big love question. Uh -huh. Question, go ahead. Go. Yeah, go. Go ahead. Question. Loud. Okay. Did you get we had that? A, no, we had a cough right in the middle. Go ahead. <laughs> Say it again. What? What did your dad do with the insects when he was done taking pictures of them? Okay. Okay. So, uh, what my dad does is he captures live insects. Um, him and his assistant will uh, will find live insects. And then after the photography of the insect is done, then the live insect is then released back into the forest. So we don't keep any of the insects. Um, I mean, sometimes insects will, will, you know, pass as a result of, you know, working with them, but it's just because they're, you know, they're so fragile. Um, but typically we never keep any of them. It's always released back into the wild. Great. Uh, Mona, did your your students have any bugs that they want to film up there? Um, who had some bugs they wanted to film? Lisa, do you? Speak now. <laughs> Anita? Butterflies, what else? Grasshoppers. Ants. What else? Wasps. Wow. Ahead, I think James. it's... A yeah, bee. bees are good. Sounds like a great spring project. Thanks, Mona. Let's go to Arlie. Arlie, did you have a question or a bug that you want to film? Um, we have bugs. bugs. Oh, good. Let's All hear right. it. All right. <laughs> um, we, we would do butterflies, and we would do butterflies, and we would do bees, wasps, and flies. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> Any questions in Arlie while you're on the screen? Uh, we could do praying mantises as well. Spiders. Yes. Are there praying mantises in, in Arlie? Yeah. 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 yeah, cool. Yeah. Very cool. I didn't know. I, I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> but, okay, cool. Did you guys have any questions for Jake? Jeremy, have a question? No. Have you ever found a velvet ant? Um, I personally have not found a velvet ant, but my dad has, has, uh, photographed and found many velvet ants. Yes. We have one more question, I think, in our league, because we've got two classes, so we got to give them a little more time. <laughs> 
Have you ever seen a king grasshopper? Um, I don't know if I've ever seen a king grasshopper. Why, do you have king grasshoppers there where you live? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Well, you're lucky. I haven't, got, I haven't gotten to see one of those. Maybe you guys could draw a picture of one for Jake and send it to him, okay? Have your teacher, have your teacher take a photo of it and email it to us. That would be great. Um, okay, do we still have Freud on? Yep, we're here. Okay, Freud, let's hear from you guys. Do you have any weird bugs in Freud that you want to film, or do you have a question for Jake? I have a question. Okay. How many types of insects are there in the world? There are millions of insects out there, and there are probably thousands of insects that have yet to be discovered. Um, if you go to the Smithsonian Institute in D.C., they have the largest uh, dead pin uh, collection of insects in the world. They have 35 million um, insects in their collection. Wow. Yeah. There's a couple of questions, so let's take another one in Freud. I would like to film um, butterflies in my backyard. And I would like to see if there's if there's any new species of bugs I can find. And I have a question: Good. How big are cages? How, how big are which ones? Katydids. Oh, how big do katydids get? So katydids will be they can range in size about that big all the way up to probably about like that big. So it really depends on the species and the maturity of the insect, but um, they, they have a pretty, a pretty big size range depending on which ones you're looking at. Excellent. Oh, we have one. Let's take one more question in Freud because you guys have had a hard time connecting. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> one more? Um, how big could the tarantula wasp? How big is the tarantula wasp? The tarantula wasp will range in size from two and a half inches to about four and a half inches uh, long. So it's it's kind of like a small small bird. Wow. Okay, um, students, I'm going to change the topic a little bit because bugs, we could talk about bugs forever and ever, but let's talk a little bit about filmmaking. And so I'm going to go back down the list of schools and see if you guys have some good questions about uh, photographing or making films and maybe even questions about what Jake's next project might be, what he's thinking of now. So let's go back and start again with Hamilton um, and see, let's, let's stay on the topic of photography or filmmaking. Hamilton, other questions about that? You guys had some before. We also wanted to hold up and show Jake what we made him. We used the Strawbees oh. connectors. We made him bugs that he's never seen. Oh, cool. So we thought that would be cool for him to see. Yeah, see that's really cool. <laughs> Take a so picture question, and send that to me. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> the question Stop. that one of the students had about film was... How, what was the hardest thing? About yeah, we had the hardest question. You know, what was the hardest thing? But the other thing was, who else had a question about filmmaking or photography? Doesn't sound like we have any questions. Okay. I can't believe that, Mrs. Allison. <laughs> I'm kind of shocked myself. I know. I know. Those are awesome bugs. Please, yeah, I love those. Please do send Thank us you. photos of those. Those are those are great. Um, use our photography skills. Yep. Let's <laughs> let's go to the Colony School and see if you have any questions about filmmaking or photography. Okay, James. Loud and proud, buddy. You make any money films? What was the Okay, question? one more time. You just cut out a little bit. I could hear it, but. Put your hand. Do you make any money making films? <laughs> it's a uh, good make, question. That is a, that is a great question. <laughs> um, that, that's a question, you know, when you come to a film festival and you meet other filmmakers, that's usually the, the hot topic. 
Um, how do you make money making films? Um, it's very difficult to make money um, as a filmmaker, but I also do editing, I do shooting, I do producing. So while I'm working on a film, I, I take on many jobs that use the same skills that I use in my filmmaking so that I can have a career and I network with a lot of people. So you don't make a lot of money doing it, but you're not really doing it for the money. You're doing it because there are topics and stories that you love and you know that they're important and that you want to share those with, uh, with other people. Good question. Uh, thank you, Colony School. Let's go to Arlie. Arlie, do you have questions for Jake about filmmaking or photography? Do you know what you're going to do for your next film? Um, I haven't decided quite yet what I'm going to do, but there's things that interest me. I'm interested in interspecies animal communications. What that is is uh, people that are able to actually communicate with animals. So there are a lot of different scientists and uh, people that study this around the world, and I'm very interested in that. And I'm also interested in small mom and pop ski areas. Um, here in Montana, you have a place called Maverick Mountain that was bought by a young couple. And, you know, it's uh, small mom and pop ski areas are, are sort of vital to communities and make skiing and snowboarding affordable for families. Um, and, uh, and it's something that's very important to me. So those are a couple ideas that I've been, uh, that I've been playing with to, to, to work on for my next project. Great. Let's take one more question from Arlie because there's two two classes there. So one more question from Arlie for Jake. Will you ever do a historic documentary? Well, I, if I if I did a documentary on um, mom and pop ski areas, there's there's a lot of history in that. Uh, they've they've become um, fewer and fewer. You know, it's, it's usually places like Jackson Hole and Vail and all these big resorts that you're more familiar with. So, but ski areas in this country have been around since I think the 1930s, like, um, some of the early, early places have. So there's a, a, a quite a bit of history in that. And, uh, you know, history always interests me. I think it tells us a lot about where we've come from and, you know, where we can go in the future. Great question. Okay, let's go to Cut Bank. Um, uh, school and see if they have a question about photography or filmmaking. We do have a question about photography. Sydney? Um, good. So, what kind of cameras do you use to get up close? What kind of cameras for the, for, uh, for the photos? So my dad uses a Canon 1DX, um, which is, uh, you know, a kind of a high-end still camera that has a really nice sensor uh, and he uses a couple of different specially designed macro lenses. Um, one lens has a has a small glass element on the front of the lens that like this and then the lens will will pull out like a like a tube almost like a microscope and that way he's able to get right in and, and photograph the eyeballs of insects like the like the picture you see behind me. Very cool. Thank you. Let's go to um, Freud and see if you have any questions about filmmaking or photography. How many days does it take for a film make, making film? How many days? How many days? Uh, well, this film took 10 years, <laughs> so that would be... 3,650 days about. <laughs> um, I think some films uh, don't take nearly as long and other films will even take longer. It just depends on what you're, what you're pointing your camera at and, uh, and being able to get enough material together so that you can tell a good story. Excellent. All righty. Well, we are just about out of time, students. Um, Jake, do you have anything else? A few parting words? Um, well, it, it, I guess I would just like to ask the classrooms, it, it, have you, had you ever known or been able to see insects like this before? Okay, let's start with, uh, we're looking at Freud. How about Freud? Um, thumbs up if you guys have seen really crazy insects like this or thumbs down if you haven't yet. Let's see. Thumbs down. 
Some of you have seen kind of crazy insects like uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. Awesome. Oh, cool. Let's go to Hamilton and do a quick thumbs up, thumbs down on, on crazy looking insects. Hey, what you said. Um, I've seen some weird looking ones in Mexico. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. cool. I think the tropics probably get more weird ones yeah, than we do. Yeah, they definitely get weird ones in the tropics. <laughs> How about Cut Bank? Let's do a quick thumbs up with you. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Have you seen really crazy looking insects like we've been talking about? Yes, Cut bank? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think they have. I I need to see some drawings of these things, boys and girls. You need to draw some things and email them to us. That'd be great. How about our Lee? They've seen them in the Glacier National Park. Oh, in Glacier oh, National cool. Park. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Let let's go to our Lee and see if if there's thumbs up or thumbs down there. A lot of thumbs down. There, a lot of thumbs down. A lot of thumbs down, not yeah. yet. Well, you maybe should look for them this summer now that you know what to look for, huh? How about the colony school? Thumbs up or thumbs down, you guys? I don't nope. see them. No? No. Nope. No weird nope. ones yet, huh? No weird ones yet. Well, hopefully you got to see some cool <clears throat> ones in the in the video clip. Yeah. And we and boys and and we watched the movie too. Good. Yeah, all right. yeah, and I challenge all all of the classes that we have on today. I challenge you now that you know how to see things differently to start looking around you, especially as the weather warms up and insects start popping out. Um, you might find that there's weird insects and you didn't even know it. So um, we can't see all of you, but let's give Jake a hand for coming in and thank him. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate that. And thank you so much for joining us today, teachers. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and we hope we get some great-looking uh, pictures of bugs. That would be yeah. fun. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thanks. Cool.